Hello guys, Dior's here. So, any of you guys ever heard of an EMP? Anybody familiar with uh, how destructive they are? Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. EMP is probably one of the scariest things that could potentially happen to a country like the U.S. or Canada. Now, I've been doing a little bit of research, mostly on uh, vehicles, uh, what vehicles could potentially withstand an EMP and which vehicles could you possibly rebuild after an EMP. And today we're going to make a video on, I guess really not so much to how to EMP harden your truck, but basically what parts you want to look at getting potentially doubles of, and that way you can put them in a sealed Faraday cage to protect it, protect them if in case, you know, an EMP were to happen. Okay. So this video is going to be for all full-size General Motors uh, pickup trucks from 1988 to about 1995. This is only going to be for pickups and SUVs with the Chevrolet 350 small block with the throttle body injection. This, like Some of this information I'm going to show you will probably be able to use for a... 1992 Suburban, 1992 through about 1995 Suburban, and 1992 through about 1994 uh, K5 edition, K1500 uh, Chevrolet, GMC, Blazers, and Jimmys. All right, so first things first, when you do get one of these trucks, they're going to be pretty old, so my suggestion to you, go ahead, go to AutoZone, Pick yourself up one of these uh, Haynes repair manuals. I'm going to tell you these things are invaluable. Lots and lots of great information on how to do even just simple repairs on your truck. I, I, I can't tell you, you know, this, this was a big help when I replaced a water pump on this truck two years ago. Never, ever done a water pump in my entire life. It was the first time. It was kind of kind of nerve-wracking for me. But, you know, got it done. So, all right. Right now, as you can see, I have removed my air cleaner. It's sitting on the ground right there. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into this, what parts you want to look at replacing. So, initially, when you get these trucks, this, like, these are the parts I'm going I'm to tell you right now you want to look at getting. You want to look for a truck that's in relatively uh, decent condition, like not just really just body wise, but just mechanically speaking, this truck has been in and out of the shop multiple times, We've replaced a lot of stuff on this, but it's, it's doing pretty good now. Uh, but like I said, you you'll want to probably end up, you'll probably end up having to replace a water pump. That's, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, uh, it's not really specific to just Chevrolets, you know, it's pretty much all older vehicles, regardless of their makes or models. Like I said, you want to replace your your serpentine belts, your hoses. Uh, you want to replace your your uh, belt tensioner. Uh, believe me, if this tensioner goes out, you're going to shred a serpentine belt and you're going to be dead on the side of the road. That's what happened to me. You want to look at replacing the battery. I mean, unless unless the battery looks pretty recent, like I said, I would suggest replacing the battery. Uh, another thing I want to bring up, and this is specific to the Chevrolets, the GMT 400 body style pickups. I mean, the, I'm sure some of the earlier 80 models might have had the same issue, but you'll want to, you'll want to replace your fuel pump and uh, your fuel pressure regulator. I didn't do that when I first got it. I started having issues. Um, this truck started being kind of sluggish. And I had a sporadic uh, engine idle, so it was it was just not good, you know. The first you know first time that happened, my it was my pressure regulator that went out. When if your pressure regulator re pressure regulator goes out, go ahead and replace that, and at the same time replace your your fuel pump or vice versa. Don't don't be cheap like me. And try just replacing one, and then seeing if, and hoping that it'll, it'll work. No, because I, a few months later, my my fuel pump ended up going out anyway. So I should have just replaced it all as one, one unit. But anyhow, 
yeah, in order to replace that fuel pump, you'll have to either take the bed completely off the body or drop the fuel tank. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some of our sensitive electronic components that you want to look for on your pickup truck. So what makes this truck unique from pretty much all the other Chevrolet pickup trucks back in this, you know, back around this time, um, this was actually the first year that Chevrolet actually introduced electronics into their uh, full-size pickup trucks. And uh, if a person wanted to, they could go through and very easily bypass the electronics on these trucks. And just make it, you know, run off of a carburetor or a mechanical fuel injection system. Like I said, really easy to do. I, like I said, I'm not going to monkey around with it. Like I said, I, I've got, <laughs> my mechanical skills aren't quite up to par for me to try to see what I can do to bypass stuff. So I just, I just kind of leave everything as it is. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start work our way in the back here. We're going to start back here. Okay. So what you're looking at right now is your uh, cap and rotor on your distributor. Um, that's something you also might want to look at replacing when you get this truck because my cap and rotor was pretty the very least the rotor was very badly worn out i just went ahead and replaced both um underneath that right here if you can see it back here all right um, i don't know if the camera's gonna focus in but back here there are two there are two plugs that go to the wire harness to your ignition control module in fact i've actually got a spare ignition control module sitting on my seat right now this is what your ignition control module looks like that is something that you will have to replace if in case an emp were to happen so you got three different three different sets of prongs to connect wires up on your uh, ignition control module believe me your engine will not run if you do not have one of these. I had to replace one of these and I accidentally didn't have one of the wires hooked up and I tried turning the truck over and I was trying to figure out why the hell is this thing not working. And I figured out I didn't get the little pigtail on the back end of this. So make sure you got all your wires connected properly. And like I said, you, this, this truck will not run without this, okay? All right. I'm going to go ahead and move on over to its buddy right here. Ignition ignition coil right here, this whole unit. This is ignition coil. These plugs right here to the wire harness, that's your ignition coil. That's also, that's, that's also EMP sensitive. You'll have to replace that too. Okay. Also, it wouldn't hurt to have some spare spark plug wires spark plugs and like I said i wouldn't probably wouldn't mess around with that uh distributor uh, that distributor sh shouldn't be affected at all because it's a mechanical part i've already kind of uh hashed this out with the mechanic and uh my buddy so like i said i've, I've consulted with a couple different mechanics and a friend of mine who's kind of a a little bit of a backyard mechanic himself all right, right here, this is your manifold actual pressure sensor, otherwise known as a MAP sensor, okay? That, this was also uh, EMP sensitive. Your truck won't run if you don't have it. This right here, connected to the throttle body, that is your throttle positioning sensor, otherwise known as a TPS, okay? I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see too well because it's starting to get dark. I should have filmed this earlier. But right here, right there, you see where finger's trying to point? Right there coming off of your driver's side exhaust manifold is called an oxygen sensor. You Believe me, your truck won't work if you don't have an oxygen sensor because the truck is trying to read the amount of... Uh, like so when the the fuel kind of atomizes in the air as it's going through 
going through like the uh, the throttle, the, going through like the throttle body and going into the actual like uh, fuel injection ports. The uh, like I said, it'll there'll there'll be like trace amounts of uh, vaporized fuel that hasn't burned up, and so your truck is constantly trying to monitor the amount of not you know unburnt up fuel and also trying to monitor how much oxygen you know so that way the truck's not running too rich so it constantly is monitoring itself all right so another thing you want to look at getting replaced here is your alternator um, unfortunately the vehicles that are older than uh, 19 set or no sorry for unfortunately with vehicles that are newer than 1973 um, they went with the magneto whereas the or sorry gosh dang I, I kind of messed it up didn't I sorry newer vehicles newer than 1973 have alternators older vehicles that are older than 1973 will have uh, magnetos magnetos aren't susceptible to the destructiveness of an EMP. One of the things that goes out on a alternator is actually your diodes. So whenever you hear that whining, you'll, you'll hear like a high-pitched whine sometimes with these things when they go out. That's your diodes there. Like I said, they've, they've overheated. Uh, usually if they get if they get dirt, oil, or grease in them, that, that, that causes them to go out faster. Um, basically, your diode is just a, a rectifier. And since we're on the topic of uh, of the alternator, we're going to move on to the starter. I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to climb underneath this truck, not in the clothes I'm wearing. But your starter... I doubt you're going to be able to see that from here. But your starter is going to be... Should be on the... Uh, passenger side of it's either the driver's side or the passenger side of the engine block it's not hard to miss in fact we'll see if i can't even pull up an image of what a starter looks like for those of you who may have not who may not even know what a starter is those of you who are brand spanking new let's say missions control yeah, let's see I think we're getting ignition. Oh, hold it. What's that? Oh, no, that's the uh, gas cylinder. Oh, I'll see if I can't. Oh, hang on. There we go. All right, so that right there is your starter motor. And judging from that picture there, it definitely looks like it's on the passenger side of the engine block, so... Uh, that is another thing you'll have to replace. Your starter is basically just like your alternator. It has uh, diodes in it as well. So that's another thing that you'll want to get replaced. Uh, last on this list, which I will show you coming up in this next clip, you, you want to replace your uh, ECM, your engine control module, or not your engine control module, your electronics control module. Uh, the electronics control module is basically the brains of this pickup. The brains of this pickup truck here, okay? It's going to be located inside the cab on the passenger side underneath the glove box. So give me a moment. I will get this taken apart, and I will show you what I'm talking about, okay? Before we move on to that... If I haven't mentioned it already, make sure you have a spare battery. Batteries aren't affected by an EMP, but if it's a super EMP and we're, we're talking about, and your battery is hooked up, I mean, it's hooked up to a complete circuit, so you're potentially looking at a, a dead battery. If, it, if the battery isn't hooked up, it, it might not be affected, but I like to play things safe, and I like to make sealed Faraday cages anyway. Uh, another thing... I'm, wouldn't hurt to get that freaking bright. So underneath the steering column, right here on the driver's side, right where your hood latch release is, this is the fuels the the fuse panel. Okay, that is your fuse panel. 
you want to make sure you got some uh, spare fuses. It uses some blade type fuses. Like we got, it looks like we got 10, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20 amp uh, fuses, okay? Just get, make sure you have, a, it's good to have a few spare fuses anyway, so. All right, I'll go ahead, we'll continue this, we'll show you the in the next clip how to get to your uh, ECM. All right, so what I'm trying to do here, take this glove box apart here. And actually, I'm just gonna see if I can't do this without having to completely dismantle my dash. I think I might be able to here. Bam. All right. I have my dot. You're going to be able to see that now because it's getting kind of dark. All right. So, this is your glove box completely disassembled. All right. Back here, you see that silver box? You see that silver box with the two thick wire harnesses coming off this is your ECM it has your prom uh, if I remember right I think prom stands for uh, was it programmable rewritable memory or something like along those lines but this like I said this right here this is your ECM this is the brains this is what controls your vehicle um, these are not cheap to get they're pretty expensive to get them brand spanking new. Um, if you do what I did, I went over to a junkyard and I pulled myself a spare one off of a 1991 Chevrolet K series, I believe it was a K2500 pickup. But yeah, like I said, your truck won't run if this is fried. Now, I mean, one would think that because this is an all metallic case I'm not sure if that's an aluminum case or if that's just a uh, sheet steel one would think that that would be enough to suffice as a Faraday cage but unfortunately it's not because those wire harnesses act like antennas and they're just going to direct the destructive uh, blast of the EMP straight into your, your uh, ECM here so and that's part of the reason oh, sorry that's part of the reason why I don't believe in building Faraday cages to protect. You know, I don't believe in building Faraday cages around these parts, around them, you know. I, I just, you know, it's better, you're better off just to do a plug and play because in order to properly build a, a sealed Faraday cage and you wouldn't be able to have it 100% sealed since the part's being used, you'd have to have specialized filters to filter out the EMP. And even then, there's, there's no guarantee that'll work, but... Hopefully these guys, you know, this video will help you guys out and you guys let me know in the comment section. All right, you guys have a good one. I'm out.